So here's our inspiration piece. It is in fact about 54 and a half by 34 inches from the widest part to the widest part. Uh, it has an irregular shape and it's a few years old now. I actually uh, have this in my home and I can see uh, you know how things hold up at, over time. The different features of the piece that I want to do in the tutorial series are make a wall hanging that is a third or a fourth the size of this one and I'm going to tinker around with dimensions and make a decision about that. I'd like to go ahead and have a background. This one looks to me like it incorporates three fabrics but done in two layers because th this is one fabric and this is the second and this is the third but this fabric and the, that fabric do not uh, overlap anywhere. They were strips and so that uh, just abutted each other. So the background will be two layers and we'll have one layer of batting and we'll have a backing and so that so far is three layers of fabric thicknesses for our machines to go through along with the uh, batting. So that's a fourth fairly thick layer. And then my leaves are only one layer and so that would give us four layers of fabric and one layer of batting. And then if we're only going to do a total of six layers, we need to do our flower somehow. My flower has one, two, three, four layers of fabric and one, two, three, so seven layers. And I'm going to attempt to do a design that can be easily brought down to just two layers and still be beautiful. And what we'll do is try to add some of the richness with stitching and thread and beads and maybe a little paint. This is actually marker here, but uh, paint or marker and try to do surface embellishments to add the detail. This is a bit of a trapunto element where I actually just put extra little scraps of batting on the surface. If we do anything like that, we'll stuff it from behind and sew up the hole like you do with a true trapunto. And then I think I do want to incorporate a bit of this, which is a hole. And the way I did it was turning to the back and then sewing this down by hand. And so we'll do that. We'll have an irregular edge, and I'd like to do one or two leaves where uh, it actually comes off the edge, and so we'll work on that. And so that's the project, and in this video I'm going to lay out the project at the uh, size that I arrive at, something that I want to be manageable for someone to do if they have one of these acrylic tables that I've mentioned in the last video. I'm also moving in and organizing the sewing room and so I'm just doing what I can as I go. We've got lights in here now so I hope that this video looks nice. I've got a, a utility light um, over the top of the table which I hope will shed a lot of nice light on I did a test video and it seemed nice. We'll see how it works. We'll change it up if it doesn't work very well. And then we did this nice track light, um, which was inspired actually by my indoor, my fancy indoor booth, uh, which has lights that I can aim around the booth. And this way I can aim the light where I need it, including, uh, everything's really a mess right now, but there's 
this storage area uh, behind that table and I can aim light in there when I'm digging around looking for something that I know I stored in there. I can aim light directly at the design wall, which right now has pinned to it a number of things that friends made. A few of them I made, but a number of them friends made, and I like to keep their stuff out in the sewing room because it inspires me. Not to despair though, there are some pockets of organization in here and I have to say I'm very happy with the way these labels came out. I didn't want to switch from the bins that I've used all these years, they're still perfectly good. And uh, I thought the labels might kind of tie it together and make it look neater and, and my handwritten old labels were getting sort of shabby. And of course I'm just happiest when I can see my fabrics. and get ideas just based on the colors. Speaking of fabrics, I'm trying to figure out um, how to make my piece and I have a lot of this fabric and so I'm considering using it. This is the right side of it. It has a lot of these um, splattery black marks and then this is the back which I also like and it shows up with a lot more of the kind of reddish and not all, so much black on the back. And so I'm considering using this fabric mainly because I have a lot and then I'm trying to figure out uh, what I would like to be my strips of interest that I'm going to put on. And I like this, I, I think a lot about will my stitches show, you know, do I know of a color of thread that if I stitch on this it will show a lot. And then there is always the possibility of using the back. And how do I like that? It would introduce a fair amount of white, but I think on this surface it would actually seem more like yellow. And then there's this metallic that's green. It's very dark compared to this. And I'm not sure. I've got some other pieces that I'm looking at. I need one of the colors to become my leaves. I kind of want to use this for some reason. And I don't have very much of it. But it's kind of a bamboo print. And I think I would like that with just a lot of stitching that showed a lot on there but I'm not sure I have enough. And then I'm really thinking about my flower being uh, kind of a burgundy, maroon type of color. Green is my favorite color, which you would think I'd have tons of green fabrics, but actually I go through a lot of green fabrics and I'm often out. And so now that I've been sewing for a couple years trying to really not buy very much new fabric, my green stocks are way down. Sometimes you can work into your plan a fabric that is completely unexpected. This brings in more pink than I was planning to do. But you could you could do something like this as your background and then obscure it a lot with what's on the front. That would be nice if I wanted a design with pink in it because it already has this. I would just be sort of doing this uh, leaf strip a little bigger. Uh, but that's a possibility. I have this very autumny fabric that is thick with sparkles. <laughs> I like sparkles. And it's got a, like an oak leaf on it. That would be pretty as part of it. Here's a fabric I've used a ton of. I bought the whole bolt of this one, and this is all that's left, I think. <laughs> this would not work for the front, but for the right thing, this would make a great back. So speaking of the backs, you can use anything on the back. And you can even use, you know, old yardage that clashes with everything, or that has teacups on it or something. Whatever you have that you bought that, uh, you don't really have a use for. You could put that on the back of a quilt. What I like to do fairly often 
is use something that I don't really have another use for that ties in nicely with the colors. And this does have a little pink. I think this would be an acceptable back. And so I am going to uh, lay out my background and I'm going to have planned what I'm going to use for my leaves and my flowers and the center of the flower, but I will change that at any time if I feel like it's not going to pop enough, it's not going to look good, and so I'm not going to cut those elements until I get there. Um, and in the same way, you know, you can make a back and then start looking for the right thing to do your top elements with. Okay, so after all that, um, and playing with it some more, I've decided to go almost a completely different direction than I said. But so here's what I've got. I'm going to do this Christmas stripe for my back. This will be my background all over fabric with interest stripes made out of these two. And then I'm going to make my leaves out of this bamboo fabric that I wanted so badly to use. Somehow my flower is going to be these tones, I'm not sure exactly what, and maybe the center of the flower will be yellow. Um, so this is my plan. I made the switch with the fabric for the background because I just kept feeling uneasy about it. There are lots of ways you can check value with uh, different tools. I didn't do that, I just put it, put the two interest fabrics with this uh, tan and black fabric and I just liked it. It just made sense to me and felt right and so I switched. So here we are and we're cut out most of the way for the background. I have my backing and my stripe goes horizontally because this is made from a half a yard of fabric and my batting is warm and natural which I'm partial to and it's cotton and it's about 34 inches wide and 18 inches tall and the reason I did that is so that if you buy uh, half a yard for your backing and for your background then you'll have a little bit left over you'll have this much left over depending on the width of the fabric. This is a particularly wide one and this one isn't. And then what I've planned here is for these two uh, secondary colors to be um, fat quarters. And so it's 18 by 22 is this average size of a fat quarter. So all I'm gonna do to do these strips is just cut these are going to be a little smaller than the ones I did on the big piece. And I won't need all the fabric, so I'll hold this back in case I don't need it. And then I'm going to start with one like this. And then this should go about like that and work pretty well. And I'm going to go every other one. And you can put them pretty close so that you can have them go right up to each other in some cases and skip a little bit more room in other cases. And then at some point they're not really going to match up to each other very well. And I just, I don't think you have to be super worried about how you do this. And so, about like that. And so I have this much extra too for my, along with my other scraps. And then if this were a big piece, I would base this on my uh, little machine with my walking foot and I would go down the center um, of a much taller piece with washable thread in the bobbin and a color that shows up really well uh, on top of this fabric, probably white, maybe black or red. 
I'm just going to baste around the edges. So first I will just pin one pin I think per strip and try to keep everything nice and flat. When I was prepping the fabrics for this I did totally iron I pressed everything really carefully. If you have clips and like to use clips, you could clip. So there it is. It's all ready to be stitched up starting next time. I appreciate you sticking with me. Thanks. It wasn't in the postcard stack that I had in the cupboard. Well, it's because I always have had it up on the wall in the sewing room and it was packed up when the sewing room was packed up. And I think I might display all those postcards in here. That might be a cool little project for me to do. But so, um, maybe in a little shadow box. I have four. Ugh. Ugh, side track. Okay, so.